What's going on, Packer fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Pack a Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. I'm very excited today because today is Dontavian Wick's deep dive day, and this has been one I've been excited to do for quite some time now. So let's not waste any time. Let's jump in right away. We'll get to the basics and then my full tape breakdown of Dontavian Wicks. So from a bio standpoint, he is 6'1", 206, a wide receiver out of Virginia. He is a true senior, will turn 22 in June. I think this is an important aspect of Dontavian Wicks we talk about, and we're going to get to the point of him maybe having a really good 21, not so great of a 2022. We have to remember that this is still a very young wide receiver, just 21, and is going to turn 22 in June. His background, he had a basketball background coming out of high school, and at the Senior Bowl, He was the American team's practice player of the week at the Senior Bowl. So what you really want to see out of a player like Dontavian Wicks, who had all the amazing traits on tape and had all the production in 2021, but didn't produce very well in 2022. And we know the story with the University of Virginia and things just kind of all you know together fell apart in 2022. If that's the case, what you want to see is him go to the Senior Bowl, compete against the best of the best, and have a monster week, and that's exactly what he did at the Senior Bowl. And I want to go back to that basketball background for just a moment. We're going to talk about this in some of his strengths, but you see that basketball background as he is playing wide receiver, and I think that's a very important aspect of his game, which is why I wanted to bring it up here. As far as statistically... In his career, he had 90 catches for 1,694 yards, an 18.8 yard average, which is a fantastic average, 12 touchdowns, but did have 15 drops. His best season was in 2021 when he had 57 catches for 1,203 yards, a 12, or excuse me, a 21.1 yard average with nine touchdowns and only five drops. So, I mean, you talk about 1,203 yards with a 21.1 yard average on 57 catches and had the red zone production, the nine touchdowns, only five drops. That is a fantastic season for for Dontavian Wicks. In 2022, he had 30 catches for 430 yards only with only a 14.3 yard average, only two touchdowns and nine drops. So when I've been talking about the difference in 2021 to 2022, this isn't just his tape looking different. This isn't just him, you know, sort of having a, you know, different level of play on the field. This is a massive drop in production. And again, we saw this all over the board with Virginia the past year, but going from 57 catches to 30, 1200 yards to only 430, a 21 yard average to only a 14 yard average nine touchdowns to only two touchdowns, and from five drops up to nine drops, you can kind of tell just statistically the type of decrease he had in overall production, productivity, and just efficiency as a wide receiver in 2022. Uh, Per PFF, Uh, grades by year. In 2019, he had a 59.3 grade, did not play in 2020 due to injury. In 2021, he had a 78.8 grade. And then in 2022, the grades matched the production, had only a 59.0 grade in 2022. As far as athletically, a 9.17 relative athletic score did not do the bench press, but a 91st percentile athlete at wide receiver had a 96% broad jump, which is what he tested best in, only had a 4.62 40 yard dash, which is only in the 38th percentile for wide receivers. Now, being super fast at wide receiver is not a prerequisite to being a superstar. Look at Devontae Adams as a great example of that, but it is going to limit his high-end speed, some of his playmaking ability, just because he doesn't have that 4-3, 4 you know, 4-3 or 4-4, 4 40 speed um, that a lot of the game-breaking wide receivers do. So that was his big red flag on his testing was just that 4-6, 40. His athletic comps per RAS were Marquez Callaway and Chris Moore, so not super productive comps there. Per mock draftable were also Marquez Callaway, and then Brandon Ayuk was on there as well. So those were some of the athletic comps for Dontavian Wicks. And that brings us to our full breakdown, the positives, the negatives, the good, the bad, the ugly. And as always, let's start with the positives. One of the things that I really liked is he is a very deceptive route runner. And the thing that's really nice is you see this on tape, but it's not a total complete mastery by any stretch of the imagination of what I think he can become as a deceptive route runner. When he is at his best, he is getting, I wouldn't say acres of separation, but he is getting 
plenty, and I mean plenty, of separation from corners. And you can see him win with mixing up his route variants, with mixing up what he's doing pre-snap, with mixing up his um, his releases at the line of scrimmage, his pacing within the route, how he's beating you know the, the same corners with, even though he's running the same route, how he runs that route can be different. And he just has a level of variance there that I really, really like. And that makes him much more deceptive as a route runner. And this is continuing to get better. And I know 2020, 2022 was not the same as 2021. I get that. He took a step back in some different ways, but ultimately I do still think that he is growing in this regard. And I think that that deceptiveness is only going to continue to get better as he becomes a professional and begins to master that craft at the NFL level. I really love his double moves. There are double moves upon double moves on tape where he's giving either an out and up, an in and up, like he's doing a, a, a you know stutter and go, like he's doing all of these different double moves and he sells them so incredibly well. You see corners like just fly up to take out his intermediate route and then he just flies right past them. I posted a couple of the videos on uh, Twitter so you can check those out if you want at Andy Herman NFL, but they are really, really fun. And his deceptiveness on those double moves, he uses his full repertoire, his full body to sell those moves. And he's using his head, he's using his eyes, he's throttling down, he's speeding back up. He's got great change of direction, which uh, he tested really well with as well. So that is when he is really at his best, when he is running those double moves. And like I said, in the, in that scenario, in a lot of those scenarios, he is actually getting like acres of separation. So you love to see him on the double moves. I really like that he is able to line up at really any of the wide receiver spots. I saw him line up on the left, on the right, in the slot. And I do think that is something that Green Bay tends to value. Matt LaFleur is going to want to move his wide receivers around. You don't ever necessarily want it to be a tell where you have to line up one receiver on the same side every time. You want to keep defenses and defensive coordinators guessing as to where these guys are going to line up. And Wicks in college played outside left, outside right, slot, and pretty much every wide receiver position that you could imagine. We'll touch base more on that in the negative side of things as well. Uh, but I do love the fact that in college, he lined up all over the place. He has a very aggressive sidestep move that works incredibly well, and he has great lateral quickness. If you think of Devontae Adams with some of his aggressive releases where he kind of stabs this way and then makes an incredible lateral you know, move to the other side and then explodes up the field, Dontavian Wicks has a little bit of that as well. And I just love that he has that really quick inside, you know, like stab outside, come back inside and then get up field, uh, you know, type of move set. And he does it very, very well. So as a route runner, he is still raw. He's still figuring out all the nuances of how to kind of put all of his skills together, but you can tell he's got ideas. And that's where that basketball background comes in. He's crossing corners over very much again, like a, you know, a Devontae Adams did. You know, Devontae Adams would always talk about how, you know, it's kind of like playing basketball when you're at the line of scrimmage and you're working on your releases and how to sort of just get a small advantage and then utilize that advantage uh, to really take advantage of the corner. So uh, this is something that I really like on tape is that that lateral quickness and that juke step and then the 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 quick lateral step to the opposite side and then the explosiveness upfield. He has it, he uses it, and he's only going to get better at it. I actually, even though he can have some, you know, really big aggressive routes and the double moves and those sort of things, I think one of the things that he can continue to learn and continue to get better at is using more subtlety within his routes. Because while all of the other things he showed that he can really do well, I almost enjoyed his routes more when he was extremely subtle. It was almost like that's when corners got more confused by Dontavian Wicks. Some of the big aggressive moves, they were able to kind of read or kind of, you know, sort of stick with them when he did some of those. But it was when he ran at them with pace and then just made a quick subtle move, that's when it really got defenders off balance. So I would like to see him do a little bit more of that. But when he uses that little subtleness, just that little quick peek to the corner, like he's going to go one way and then explodes the other way. It's just, it's the, it's the little things sometimes. And Devante was so great at all of the little things and just manipulating defenders with every ounce of his being. Those are the things that he's got some of the big moves, the, the aggressive releases, the jab steps and those sort of things. But when he just does, you know, quick, you know, get up the field, look left, post route, and there's nothing too complicated about it, sometimes that's when Wicks is actually at his best. He also does give solid effort as a blocker. I wouldn't necessarily label him as like a plus, plus, plus blocker or anything like that. 
but I see the effort. I don't have concerns about it. And he's going to give at least enough effort that he's not going to get taken off the field because he can't block or anything like that. So I think it's going to be something that he continues to grow with as he becomes a member of this Matt LaFleur offense and blocking becomes so incredibly important to him. So I think that that is going to continue to improve, but he's got the effort there already. And really from a college wide receiver standpoint, that's usually the biggest piece of the puzzle is having the effort be there and he can sort of learn, um, you know, even from like a Christian Watson already, who's already a phenomenal blocker at wide receiver. So I think he's going to come along just fine as a blocker. Um, he does vary his releases at the line of scrimmage quite a bit. So his release package is already pretty diverse and he'll throw a lot of different things at corners to see what they can handle and then you know sort of set them up and then try something different. So I do like that he's trying those things and he's already starting to figure out what he can win with and when he can win with those moves. So I like his release package already at the line of scrimmage. After the catch, he uses a little forward jab step a la Donald Driver or Randall Cobb, where he kind of goes like one foot forward and then sort of like does a little bit of a juke back and then sort of, you know, is able to maneuver his way off of that. And he makes a lot of people miss on his first move. So that's one thing that I really like after the catch with Wicks is that he's got that quick jab step, can make people miss, and then can get upfield right after it. He also understands how to stack corners at the top of the route. So when you're, listen, when you're 462 as a 40 yard dash time, you can't just, you know, you know, use your 4340 speed to just run away from corners. You've got to be able to get on top of the corner and then stack them and then know how to make sure that the corner isn't able to get back in the play. And Dontavian, uh, Dontavian Wicks did a very nice job of that, of stacking corners, of making sure that they couldn't get back and making some of those explosive plays. Do you know how hard it is to average over 20 yards per reception on 50 plus catches when you're a 46240 guy? You have to have some pretty serious skill at making explosive plays and stacking corners and getting down the field. And all of his route running, his releases, his ability to stack receivers, those are the sort of things that allowed him to make those explosive plays. And it really shows up in the little details that he does to make sure that he's getting open and available for those type of plays. He also has, when we talk about the, the high-end athleticism that he has, it showed off in a lot of the acrobatic you know, catches he had. He had a very quick change of direction. Like you see the athleticism on tape. And we've talked about this in a lot of different players, but some players test incredibly well and you don't see it always carry over to the football field. Some players test terribly, but they're so, you know, they're, they're just quick and they've learned how to exploit every little advantage and they just know how to play football, right? And I see that with Dontavian Wicks. I see both. I see that he's got the overall high-end athleticism, but he's had to make up a little bit for his 4640 speed. And you sort of become a, you know, he's got the leaping ability. He's got the, the change of direction ability and he's got good enough speed. But when you combine that with some of the traits and the skills that he has as just an overall wide receiver, that's when you can start stacking this up and become a very talented and well, you know, overall well-rounded wide receiver at the position. So that athleticism definitely serves him well. As mentioned, he's had the explosive playmaking ability, especially in his junior season. In his junior year, he had 27 plays over 20 yards. Actually, that might've been both seasons combined, but either way, he's had 27 uh, plays over 20 yards. So that just gives you an idea. We don't even need to know how many plays it is because when you have over 50 catches in a season and average over 20 yards per catch, that's the type of playmaking that he has had at wide receiver. And then again, his overall productivity in 2021 showed you exactly what he is capable of as a wide receiver. I don't care if it's at the college level or whatever, when you're putting those type of numbers up, you know that you know how to beat corners. You know you know how to get open, make plays, explosive plays. And he showed all of that in 2021. The negatives, the biggest one you can probably guess, the 4.6240 speed. And I want to reiterate, there have been some phenomenal wide receivers, Devontae Adams, who have not run the 4.340s, the 4.440s. You can survive in the NFL with a 46240. There's no question about it. This is not like a debilitating like 4840 or something like that. This is still a more than fine time, especially when you're over six feet tall, gives you a little bit more room for error. But you add in that he has all the other explosive traits. You add in that he's got some pretty good, you know, route running and separation ability. He varies his releases at the line of scrimmage. He changes his pacing within the route. You know, he knows how to stack corners. You add all those things together and it's not as big of a deal but it just does limit his overall upside some when you only have that 46240. The other thing that is really going to be a work in progress is he can get extremely slowed down by more physical, especially longer corners, and he needs to improve his play strength if he's going to improve in that regard. 
bigger corners are going to get on him. And what he wants to do is he wants to sort of like, get, you know, run around them and start stacking them or start getting into those moves. And a lot of times what happens is when these bigger, more physical corners get on him, they are, they're stacking him and, you know, punishing him at the line of scrimmage. And he can't get off of that very well. And like, he just can't even get into his releases or his moves or anything that makes him such a fun wide receiver. And then he, you know, like, he's got good size that's, you know, over six feet tall, but I also wouldn't say like, he's not like a jump ball receiver. You don't want to just like throw it up to him. And he's made some spectacular, you know, catches, no, no questions about it, but you want him to separate that. That's ultimately where Wicks is at his best. And when he gets matched up against some of those more physical corners, he separates or he struggles to separate and it's going to have to be something that he continues to improve. And then that, like I said, that functional play strength is definitely something that would help him with that. And then that's probably just going to come time, you know, with a NFL weight room and putting on that strength and making sure that he becomes a more overall well-rounded athlete and wide receiver. Hopefully that comes with time, but right now very much struggles to get off a of press man coverage against those longer, more physical corners. And he's going to see a lot of those in the NFL. I, I also think that he at times does a little bit too much as a route runner. As mentioned, it's his subtle routes that a lot of times win with ease and you'll see him get a little bit out of control, a little bit, you know, I would say like lacking precision and lacking detail within the routes. And it's just because he's trying to do a bit too much. And I think once he figures out how to actually manipulate corners more consistently and know, all right, he's lined up here and this is what I'm going to be able to do based on the route that I'm running, based on his split. Is he trying to play me inside or outside? Like as he gains just more and more knowledge of what corners are trying to make him do, and he becomes a more professional wide receiver with all the attention to detail, I think that's something that's going to continue to improve. But he just does a little bit too much at times. And I just kind of want to see him tone it down or at least start to master that a little bit more and know what he can get away with when against which corners and which coverages and when he needs to use those specific releases, the routes and do a little bit more in other times where he can just be a little bit more subtle within his route. I do also wonder a little bit just based on watching his tape, if he's ultimately going to be best in the slot in the NFL. And I'm not saying he can't play outside. I think he absolutely can. He's shown it in college and I think he's got good size. I think he's going to be able to play outside, but the more I watch him, and even as I was looking at him at, at you know rookie mini camps and watch more of his tape, I do wonder if ultimately he becomes a little bit better of a slot wide receiver than an outside wide receiver. And I think just him being able to get off of press coverage on the outside is the first thing that's going to be you know proved to me that he can play on the outside. But right now, until he gets that down, I do kind of wonder if he's ultimately going to be best in the slot. As mentioned, he needs to be more crisp and accurate on his routes. Not only can he be a little bit out of control, but you can see where he's just lacking precision at times. There are a couple routes on tape where it's just like, man, I don't even know what your target point was because you're like, it was all over the place. So that has to become much, much better. If Jordan's going to trust him and know where he's going to be on specific plays, those routes are going to have to be to the exact detail if he wants to earn that trust with Jordan. And that's something that he's going to have to improve at the NFL level. As mentioned, he can get a little bit out of control. That extends to his breaks as well. When he is in his breaks and he's making a cut one way or the other, again, a little bit out of control, and that allows opposing corners to sort of catch up or make a play on the ball. And while he's made some pretty incredible you know, catches, some acrobatic catches, some contested catches, he's very inconsistent. And you will see some plays that he could have made a diving catch or a sliding catch, and he just wasn't able to come up with it. So you see a little bit of inconsistency there. And that leads us into those 14 drops that he's had over the past two seasons per pro football focus. His, it's concentration stuff. Like he has to be able to come up with the layups and the easy catches. Yes, it's great that he's making some of the contested stuff and you can certainly give him some accident forgiveness on the ones that are extremely difficult and he just doesn't come up with, but he's got to get the gimmies. He's got to get the layups. Can't have the concentration errors. We saw much more well-rounded in 2021 with only the five drops. It has not been as great in 2022 and it's going to have to be something that gets fixed in the NFL. I do think that he also has inconsistent run after the catch. So he's got that great jab step, but he's not a broken tackle guy. He's not a stiff arm guy. He's not going to make a ton of people miss in the open field. I think he misses, makes the first person miss quite a bit. And that's a superpower after the catch. But after that, he doesn't have that runaway speed. So there's some good stuff. And listen, you don't get the 20 plus yards per catch in a season if you don't have some yards after the catch ability. And if you do, you know, if he is able to make that move and get into space, he can certainly get downfield. But 
He's not, I wouldn't say he's like this yak monster that is just going to eat up all the extra yards. Again, doesn't have the speed, doesn't have the physicality. It's just, there's only going to be so much he can do, but he does have one very good move at his disposal and it works more often than not. As mentioned, as a positive, the 2021 productivity was amazing. The 2022, not so much. And that's going to be the big mystery here is do we see more of the 2021 Dontavian uh, Wicks in, in you know, with the Packers, or do we ultimately see the 2022 version and you just can't ultimately put everything all together? And then I should mention as well, he did have a Liz Frank injury in 2020 that cost him the entirety of the season. Never really want to see a Liz Frank injury, but the good news is he's recovered from it, played amazing in 2021, played all throughout it in you know, 2022, hasn't had issues with it since. So hopefully it's behind him and not an issue, but he did miss all of 2020 with that injury. What he can bring to Green Bay, I think he can be a very solid depth piece at wide receiver. Like I said, I would probably start him a little bit more in the slot and have him work his way on the outside as he puts on a little bit more functional strength. He's going to have to figure out a way to earn a role on special teams. This was not something he did a ton of, and he's not going to be probably a return guy for them. So if he wants to be active on game days, he's going to have to be a better gunner. He's going to have to figure out something that he can do on special teams that adds some sort of value. If he can't, it's going to make it so that some of the other wide receivers are more likely to be active on game day. And it's just going to limit Wicks's chances to be a factor as a wide receiver because he's not going to be active on game day if he can't do that. So that's probably step number one for Wicks is figuring out something that you know he can do and help this team with on special teams. Because if not, like I said, he's going to be inactive on game day and he's going to have to learn this system. It's not an easy system to learn. And it's going to have to be something that he dedicates himself to. The reports were in 2022 under a new system at Virginia. He really struggled with the new system and kind of putting everything together. Now, like I said, Virginia was just kind of a mess overall in 2022. So I'm willing to give him also some accident forgiveness for that. But he's going to have to come in, learn this Matt LaFleur playbook and show that he can learn a system and not have issues with it moving forward. Final thoughts on Dontavian Wicks. In my opinion, 2021 Dontavian Wicks is a second or third round pick, probably a third round pick if I'm being honest, but I think he's a top 100 pick in a draft. 2022 Dontavian Wicks is probably a seventh round pick, maybe even a late seventh round pick. So the difference there between a top 100 pick and a seventh round pick is pretty significant. I think Green Bay did very well to get him in the fifth round. They're clearly hoping that the 2021 Dontavian Wicks is the real Dontavian Wicks. And if they got that, they got an absolute steal in the fifth. If they didn't, if they got seventh round 2022 Dontavian Wicks, there's still some upside there, but I think in the fifth round, especially towards the end of the fifth, you're willing to take that gamble a little bit more. If it doesn't pay off, it's just a fifth round pick. If it does, you potentially got a top 100 pick out of it by taking what you hope is the 2021 version of Dontavian Wicks. And I will add as well that I thought he looked very good at rookie minicamp. I thought his routes were crisp. I thought he showed off good hands, plucking the ball out of the air. And I'm extremely excited to see what he's going to be able to do when the pads come on in training camp and we get to preseason, etc. So definitely a player that I'm going to be keeping a very, very, very close eye on moving forward. Two names I want to give you with Dontavian Wicks. And before I give you those two names, let me just say, of all the rookies that Green Bay selected, all 13 rookies, I think there is more variance on Dontavian Wicks than any of their other 13 rookies. Meaning, if you told me he became a Pro Bowl wide receiver, I would legitimately say, yeah, I, he, I think he can legitimately do that. Like, I think he can become not only a Pro Bowl wide receiver, I think he become a very good, near, like, special Pro Bowl wide receiver. I think there's that sort of upside. If you told me, three years from now, he's out of the league. I could believe that as well. Like, I think that is the type of variance that we're looking at with Dontavian Wicks. I'm going to give you two names. I'm going to start with the, the, the positive name and that's Devonte Adams. And no, 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 no. I'm not saying that Dontavian Wicks is going to be the next Devonte Adams. I'm not anywhere near that. All right. But how Dontavian or how Devonte Adams won wasn't necessarily with the super high 9.99 RAS score or anything like that. He won because he was a skilled wide receiver and he won with spontaneity, athleticism, and a little bit of that basketball skill in his route running, especially with his releases off the line of scrimmage. He became an artist and a technician at the position and he became extremely special. With Dontavian Wicks, I see a little bit of that spontaneity. I see that athleticism and I see that basketball in his routes. I see a lot of that same sort of special formula 
that Devontae had to be a special wide receiver. But the thing with Devontae is he just, like I said, he mastered it every single day, every ounce of his being, like all he seemed to care about in the world was just how can I how can I get corners to go one way so I can go the other? How can I make it so that they take a false step? How can I get it so that I can manipulate them to do what I want because I'm going to do something totally different and I'm going to have them do something totally different so that I get acres of space and separation. And like his whole being, that's all that seemingly mattered to him. And I know that's obviously not the case, but that's what it felt like. And if Dontavian Wicks goes about his business with the same level of of intensity and like just wanting everything in the world to be able to mess with corners and do whatever he wants at the line of scrimmage and get free releases and get acres of space. I think he can do that. I really, really do because I see some of those same pieces in Devante's special sauce in Dontavian Wicks's special sauce. So that's the good news. I also, the other name I will give you is Jamon Moore. Jamon Moore notably struggled with some of the concepts and stuff in college. He came to Green Bay, struggled with the concepts in Green Bay, had a lot of drop issues. And if you go back and watch Jamon Moore on tape in college, man, I was so excited based on the tape about Jamon Moore coming to Green Bay. Like just so excited. He had great size, great athleticism. The tape was amazing. The highlights were amazing. And yeah, there were some things that he needed to round out and become a little bit more you know, masterful with, just like we're sort of talking about Dontavian Wicks here. But the the upside was just tremendous with Jamon Moore. And I thought for sure, like I thought by the end of his rookie season, we were going to be talking about Jamon Moore as one of the next great Packer wide receivers. But the system gave him issues, could never really put it together, consistently struggled with drops, couldn't get those releases in the NFL level like he did in college. And it was a total bust and he was out of the league in what, three, two, three years, something like that. So those are the two names I'll give you. And that's why I say when the variance is incredible with Dontavian Wicks, that's the type of variance. And I'm not going to say that he's going to be the next Devontae Adams. That would be, I don't want to put even that, um, you know, that I don't want to put that on anyone, period. I also don't want to say that he's going to be the next Jamon Moore because I don't want to put that on anyone, period. Like, but those are the two names I'll give you with Wicks because I do think he's got, like I said, some of that special sauce that Adams had. I do think he had some of the struggles that Jamon Moore has. And this is going to be up to Dontavian Wicks. And that's just a quick aside here. That's why I say all the time, like when you say like, not you specifically, but when people say that, you know, this guy's a bust or this was a, such a terrible draft pick, there are traits. Go back and listen to these positives again for Dontavian Wicks. When you're listening to those positives, you're probably like, oh my goodness, this guy's a this guy's like a first round pick and they got him in the fifth round. When you listen to the negatives, you're probably like, oh, they got another Jamon Moore. He's going to be a bust. And this guy totally, there's gray area. And this is up to Dontavian Wicks and what the Packers can do with them as you know their, their coaching staff and getting the most out of them. I really truly believe that if Wicks dedicates himself and the Packers coaches get the most out of him, they're going to get a massive, massive steal in the fifth round. If not, if Dontavian Wicks doesn't give that and the Packers can't get the most out of him, you're probably looking at another situation where he's probably not on the team three, four years from now. That's the type of crazy variance that there is here. But fifth round pick, that sort of upside, I'm incredibly excited. I already had a pretty nice showing at rookie minicamp. And I, like I said, I cannot wait for the pads to come on for Dontavian Wicks and like us to get a much better look at what he might be able to do as a member of the Green Bay Packers. That's going to do it for me today. Thank you so much for joining me. Always appreciate it. We'll be right back here tomorrow with another breakdown, but until next time, and as always, go Pack Go.